talk about languages now, okay? So sorry to the Dublin fans down here who want to talk about football. Um, I'm going to talk about languages because I spent four years at UCD studying international commerce and Chinese. So primarily I'm going to talk about why I decided to study Chinese and then about my experiences in China and what I learned from all of that. Okay, and then I want to share with you three lessons at the end of it all. Just three simple lessons that I learned from all of this. <coughs> Actually, before we start, we get a show of hands just to see who's studying what languages here. Who's studying Spanish? Yeah. German? <laughs> French? Yeah. Right. Um, now, be honest now, right? Put your hand up if your language is your least favorite subject at school. Okay, so a few of you, right? Well, that's good, actually, because this story starts... When I was in school myself, okay, I studied Spanish in school, and to be honest, it was my least favorite subject, okay, maths and Spanish, right? I loved history, economics, biology, but I just thought it wasn't a languages guy, right? I never wanted to go to Spanish college like all my friends. I had to be dragged kicking and screaming to Irish college. So you'd wonder then, how did I end up here in China studying Mandarin Chinese, right? <clears throat> and the truth of it is that it was actually, it happened by accident, essentially, right? Um, you remember, or you know the CAO application form, right? For those maybe who might be doing the Leaving Cert next year, yeah. right? Well, your teacher might tell you the number one rule about the CAO form is that you don't put down a course as number one on your CAO unless you're absolutely certain that that's the course you wanted to do, right? A fairly simple mistake to avoid, but that's exactly what I did, okay? <laughs> International commerce in Chinese at UCD was 50 points higher than the course I actually wanted to do. But I just thought, I probably won't get the points, I'll put it down, and uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, results come out, I got way more than I was expecting, and I was immediately accepted onto this course. And that's when I started to panic, right? Because after struggling through Spanish, leaving through Spanish, I was now faced with the prospect of going to China and studying Chinese. <coughs> um, that day I actually rang up UCD and asked them, can you please change this course? I'm, I'm like, this is not what I wanted to do. And of course they told me, no, didn't your teacher tell you this? Uh, you're not allowed to change. And I'm glad they didn't let me change. Because the following four years genuinely remained some of the best four years of my life, right? <coughs> um, so I started off in September 2012. And I quickly realized that I actually really enjoyed this language. Um, there's lots of funny things about the language. But what I really loved was how words are formed in particular. I'm going to give you your first lesson in Chinese here, right? Just to show you how Chinese words are formed. So the first word here, you can see dian nao. This simply means electricity plus brain, right? So an electric brain. What might you guess that might be? A computer, OK? Second one, dian hua. Electricity plus speech. The telephone, yeah, exactly. Dian si long. This is a little bit different. Change plus color plus dragon. Chameleon. And the last one, mao toing. Cat plus head plus hawk, or the hawk with the cat head. Anyone? An owl. Okay, so I didn't even realise uh, an owl had a head like a, ca a head like a, a cat until I learned that word. But anyway, um, you can see how the Chinese language makes words by combining characters with themselves or, or very simple meanings. And all of this really intrigued me. I became more and more excited about the prospect of living in China for a year. Uh, so I just thought, go for it. Um, and a few days after we lost at Donegal in 2014, I was on a plane to Beijing. Now this is Beijing. This is a photo I found on, on Google Images. But um, I thought a more accurate reflection of Beijing would be this. This is a, a photo I took uh, off my own phone. And that's smog. That's not, that's not a cloudy day in Beijing. <clears throat> and I have to say, for a man who had never been, out, never been to Asia before, in fact, had never been outside Europe, um, landing in here felt like landing onto another planet. Um, you've got roads, six, seven, eight lanes, streets packed with people, and smells, smells that you never knew existed before. And if it was going from the food stalls or the bins, sometimes you wouldn't be quite sure. Um, but it all, it, it was really quite insane. I remember this one story that, that summed it up for me. Um, I sat into a taxi about a week into my journey there. I sat in a small talk with my taxi driver, and he asked me where am I from. And I said, Ireland. And he looked at me kind of confused. He said, Ireland. And I said, you, well, you know England. And he said, ah, yes, I, Ireland, Ireland is England. And I said, <laughs> said, no, it's a small country, a small island right beside England. But he just shook his head and said he didn't know. So not only did this man not care how many All-Ireland medals I had, he couldn't speak a word of English, and he'd never heard of the word of, of Ireland before. 
I'm going to show it. After a few weeks then of studying Chinese, intense Chinese class, we got much, much better at the language and we started to travel around a bit more, okay? I'm just going to show you a few photos of that now. You might have seen the movie Avatar. All right, that's, this is Avatar here, this, the Avatar Mountains, the floating mountains of Pandora. James Cameron got the inspiration from that, from this national park in the middle of, uh, of China. This is Inner Mongolia. Um, everything that could go wrong went wrong on this trip, right? Um, but it was, it was a, a, a great experience altogether. We were fed sheep guts when we got to the tent here um, in Inner Mongolia, and I'll never forget that. Hanging out with Hua Shan here, the mother didn't particularly like this one. Um, but what I love about this is just how utterly insane it is that this was allowed. You can imagine if something like that was in Ireland or Europe, you'd never be allowed to kind of do this kind of thing. <coughs> but of all the kind of strange uh, Chinese traditions, I found this one to be the strangest. Um, we came across this in a park one Sunday afternoon in Shanghai, and we thought these men were selling something. But when we got closer and we could see the writing on the paper, we noticed that what they were actually advertising was their daughters. And on these sheets, they had their daughter's height, age, weight, and even details of what, what they wanted in a potential husband for their daughter. Stuff like how much they expected them to earn. Um, and this is apparently because when you get to a certain age in China, and you're not married, it's something to be quite embarrassed about. And you're called a, a leftover woman, literally. So it's quite strange. <clears throat> OK, so what? What did I actually learn from all of this then? Right? These are the three simple lessons that I was talking about. The first one is quite simply that I learned that anyone and everyone can learn the language. Right? So if me, a guy who hated Spanish and that hated Irish classes in school, can go to China and learn to speak Chinese, then I promise you anyone can. Right? No one who ever learned the language regretted it. It's a skill you have for life. And if you really go after it and you back yourself, you immerse yourself in the language, then we're all capable of learning any language. I promise you that. The second thing I learned is that if you want to create truly memorable experiences, um, experiences that give you perspective and an appreciation for things we enjoy at home and an appreciation for things that, of other ways of life, I guess, you have to take yourself outside of what is familiar to you. So take yourself outside of your comfort zone. Because that might seem obvious or cliche, but it's so important because you might know that China has 1.6 billion people, but you might realize how tiny we are here until you meet people who have never heard of Ireland. Right? Or what if your dad was over in Stephen's Green trying to marry you off, essentially to the highest bidder? Or simply not having clean air to breathe. Right? These are all things that we kind of take for granted. Um, and you, you get these kind of humbling experiences all the time when you go abroad and you learn languages and experience different cultures. Now before I get to the last thing I learned, I'm going to talk a little bit about technology, right? Um, and being Generation Z, I know you're all well acquainted with technology. Um, we all love our smartphones and our social media and digital media and the likes. And we all hear about how we're living in the digital age at the moment and how technology is coming to take over these, uh, these jobs. Technology is the future, they say, right? Um, but what I learned in this climate is that speaking to, to another human being in their language is one of the most human things that you can do, right? So I call that being truly human. And I really believe that because being able to speak to someone in their native tongue and make them smile and make them laugh is something that technology will never be able to replace, right? It can break down cultural barriers that, that sometimes can be very difficult to get around. Right? It's that personal touch, kind of like a handwritten note that just allows you to connect with people in a really, really special way. And the great thing about it is you don't even need to be fluent. Just a couple of fuckle in Chinese or whatever language, and you can see it in people's faces and how they respond to you that you've immediately connected, right? So the future doesn't belong to technology, right? The future belongs to those who can be the most human. Um, that's my story, and I'm sure you'll all have your own. So I'd encourage you all to go out, explore different cultures, learn the language, and by doing that, you'll create a better future for you and for everyone. Right? Thank you.